going on YouTube it's Paul Paul Piper back here with you and tonight I am getting my dose of vitamin N and we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, announcement by the FDA yesterday uh, stating that they are going to significantly uh, reduce the amount of nicotine in tobacco products and we're going to talk a little bit more about that. They also did another thing yesterday, uh, which is, uh, in effect, uh, that the nicotine reduction isn't technically in effect yet. That's just their stated purpose and what they're going to be going after. The deeming regulations that everybody was worried about with pipe tobacco, basically uh, out of the Tobacco Control Act, gave the FDA the power to regulate uh, tobacco, and they... Uh, took control of regulation over e-cigarettes, cigars, and uh, pipe tobacco. Well, they had the deadline, which everybody was worried about, and that was pushed back. Well, they pushed it back again, uh, at least uh, the filing deadline is now pushed back uh, substantially uh, to August 8th, 2021. So, between now and then, I guess people needn't fear, but who knows what's going to happen with the uh, the nicotine content in tobacco. And you can check this out on the FDA's website. You can also look on uh, you know, various other outlets. There's an article in the Washington Post today titled FDA aims to lower nicotine in cigarettes to get smokers to quit and uh, you know you may be saying to yourself well if they're going to be lowering it only in cigarettes why should I care why should I care I love that argument well, it's not me um, that they're coming after so I don't really don't give a shit uh, there's a famous line uh, from a, uh, I think it was a Lutheran uh, uh, preacher in Germany. You know, first they came for the Jews, and they came for the homosexuals, and they came for you know, everybody else, and I didn't care during during those times. Well, then they came for me, and that's how we as Americans need to kind of look at all these types of regulations as infringements on our collective liberty and freedoms, and an infringement on one needs to be uh, viewed as an infringement on all. That's the key. That's the key. And the uh, current uh, head of the FDA, a uh, fellow by the name of Scott Gottlieb, MD, real mensch, he has kind of indicated in a statement that he made that that's their intention. He said, our approach to nicotine must be accompanied by a foundation of rules and standards for newly regulated products. Newly regulated products. To be successful, all of these steps must be done in concert and not in isolation. So what does that say? FDA has the power to regulate all tobacco products and instead of doing them in isolation, they need to be comprehensive. They need to be done in concert. So he's kind of showing his cards there that it's not just something with cigarettes it's going to be across the board across the board smokeless tobacco you know cigars pipes e-cigarettes everything everything they're just stating now that it's going to be cigarettes because that's kind of the the big fish in the pond but mark my words it is going to be everything across the board because their, their goal is, and they stated in the article, a um, uh, smokeless America, or tobacco, nicotine-free America, um, and they want this to be the generation. And You know, there are negative health effects of nicotine and tobacco, and but, to me, it's an issue of freedom. The libertarian in me says I should be able to do what I want to do to my body. Now, when you have socialized medicine, um, 
you know, that kind of conflicts with that because people end up paying for your choices, uh, your health choices or, you know, arguably poor choices. That's why I don't want to see any of that. I'll take care of myself, you know, others take care of themselves. And you could have a functional healthcare system without uh, government paternalism. You could have competition across state lines and do tort reform and a bunch of other things you can do to um, make healthcare affordable for the masses and reduce the involvement of government. But that's not what they want to do. They want to have that industry completely cornered and have complete control over it because it helps control us. That's what they want to do. And this is a war on tobacco and it's just the next phase of it. So if you enjoy Old Joe Krantz, which is what I'm smoking tonight, you might want to stock it up because this has a fairly high amount of nicotine in it. Um, maybe there's another blend that you prefer out there that has, uh, you know, a good dose of vitamin N. And, you know, they may just dilute it to the point where it has uh, just a small amount in it. And uh, I'm not saying that that's why we smoke, but again, I'm an adult. I can do what I want. Another thing that they're saying that they have a vested interest in is reducing flavorings. Well, is it going to be flavorings of um, just cigarettes and um, your machine rolled cigars? And they also have been doing a lot with smokeless tobacco, like dip and, and things. Um, cities, municipalities are actually putting bans on, you know, smokeless tobacco. You have to be 21 years old, or all tobacco, 21. Um, and then they'll have prohibitions on selling uh, fruit-flavored, you know, dips and things like that. Well, what's the next extension on that? Is it going to be any sort of, you know, pipe tobacco? that uh, has a flavoring in it? Is that their next, you know, expansion? It will be. It will be. Uh, unless something is done to, you know, curb this huge government and government paternalism, which is exactly what it is. And, uh, yeah, so... Check those articles out. Um, now you say, how did this, what was kind of the defining moment? What well, was 2009 with the uh, Tobacco Control Act that was signed into law by Barack Hussein Obama? So if you voted for him, well, good for you. And if you look at the uh, call, uh, the votes that occurred in Congress at the time, that was passed in 2009 that gave the FDA the ability to regulate um, tobacco products as a as a drug you know there was a substantial uh, disparity between the two parties in the house well the bill was sponsored by uh, that oh my god he's so ugly check him out check his picture out Democrat from California California Henry Waxman, man, he is ugly. Oh my God, he's ugly. I wish I had a picture. And if I really got into video editing, I would probably have a picture of him appearing right here, right now. He is just an ugly dude. Oh my God, a real mensch, too. Uh, he sponsored the bill. And Democrats, at that time, voted 228 in favor of it. Republicans, 104 against it. So only eight Democrats voted against it in the House. So there was a significant uh, difference between the Democrat Party and the Republican Party. 
And in the Senate, it was um, a little bit more in favor of it across the board. But out of 17 nays, or people who were against it, only one of those 17 was a Democrat. There's a Senator, I think, Hagan from uh, North Carolina. Well, North Carolina, you got all the tobacco, you know, companies and farmers. So that brings up my next comment. How do we change this? What can you do? You on YouTube. Somebody that enjoys smoking. Well, you could probably look at who you're voting for. And if you're not voting, maybe you should try to vote for somebody who uh, values individual rights and liberties and freedoms. Freedoms of adults, of consenting age. 18, not 21, if you can go and fight and uh, die in some shithole like Afghanistan or Iraq, you should be able to smoke. You should be able to dip. So putting these restrictions that you got to be 21 in all these different liberal cities, and check those cities out. It's not, you know, uh, Muskogee, Oklahoma that's doing it, or Paducah, Kentucky. It's, you know, Boston, and, you know, all these liberal uh, bastions are doing this. So, maybe you should, you know, if, if this matters to you, if, if you care, if you're, you know, on this, on this issue, if you're passionate about it, maybe you should look into who you're voting for and what they believe in. And not every Republican as an individual is going to be somebody that you want to support. Because not all of them support the issue. But I can sure as hell tell you that it's not the Democrats. It certainly is not the Democrats. So, just know that. Just know that. And, uh, you know, maybe if you vote for somebody that will, you know have a common sense approach, a libertarian, you know, free market freedom approach, you'll be able to enjoy um, your hobby and your tobacco in whatever form you want to. Uh, whatever nicotine content as you, as a consenting adult, uh, feel is appropriate. And not have some government bureaucracy uh, limiting you. So, yeah. So that's, uh, that's a little bit about that, kind of the background of it. And, you know, we're probably going to see additional regulations. And as uh, uh, Gottlieb said from the FDA, it will probably be um, very uniform. And are the nicotine uh, reductions going to happen uh, immediately? Or is it going to be in gradual phases of reduction? Well, they're not clear on that, from what I read. So, stay tuned for that. I mean, you could see uh, nicotine content in cigarettes, and you know, they might do it for everything. Just automatically decreased, which, you know, there's uh, the real possibility then you're going to encourage um, black market trade and, you know, regular content, nicotine content, or higher content nicotine, uh, uh, tobacco products. Um, another thing is, well, if somebody's just getting X amount from smoking, uh, they're just going to smoke more of it to get the same impact. And it just stands to reason. I mean, just with all these liberals, uh, like Michael Bloomberg... Another real mensch, uh, mayor of the city of New York, reducing the um, serving size of uh, pop. You know, well, if I'm paying for eight ounces of pop, but I wanted 12, I might just buy two and get 16. If I'm drinking more, paying more. Um, and 
those are just free market principles that are coming into play. But because they're communists, they have no concept of that. And they're communists without any common sense. People are going to do what they want to do within the confines of the law. And some people will go beyond the confines of the law, go into a black market situation, you know, an underground situation. Let's look at marijuana. And now they're finally, you know, realizing that, you know, people are still going to grow it, still going to consume it. Um, and they're deregulating it in some states. Hold will basically be doing the same thing to tobacco, higher nicotine and whatever form that they put extensive regulations on, people will still, still consume it. So, um, but just like that, you, Mr. and Mrs. John Q. American, you need to do something about it. You get active, call your congressman. And uh, you know, tell them what you think about it. I just sit back there and complain and say, "Oh, they're doing this. Poor me." And that's that's what that's what we become. Let them do whatever they want to us uh, under whatever terms that they see deem fit, and we just take it on everything, everything. So. You know, is, is, are things going to change? Probably not, unless our attitude changes. So I'll leave you with that thought. If you like this video, hit like. Subscribe if you have not yet. For those of you who have, I appreciate it. And uh, if the good Lord's willing and the creek don't rise, I'll see you next time. It's been Paul Paul Piper enjoying his vitamin N. Take care. <laughs>